right. you know, just looks that's it. But what's actually going to happen now at 12 minutes past six on a Thursday, is Ben, you're going to bring us right back down to earth, aren't you, with some talk about how much things are costing. And this is serious, and it's affecting people's lives. Now, specifically, you're looking at holidays. Yeah, holidays and air travel, actually. So there is, you know, there is a link. For, for many hard-up families, for many people struggling with the cost of living, so many people, the cost of food, fuel, household bills, it just means there's less money to spend on things like holidays. So people are looking for deals. They can't necessarily find them. I'll explain why. Uh, let me talk through it all. Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Airways Departure Lounge. Uh, despite its name, we've usually been standing here talking about travel restrictions, quarantine, testing, traffic lights, even places totally closed for British travellers, but not anymore. With summer around the corner, holiday rules are now a lot simpler. But could high inflation put a spanner in the works? Consumer spending on travel agents was 3.5% down in April compared with the same month in 2019. Spending on airlines was nearly 10% lower last month compared to the April before the pandemic. So that suggests things aren't quite back to normal yet. But it was still the best month for the industry since COVID-19. Around 46% of people are currently planning to cut back on holidays and travel. Many more of us are intending to stop splurging on clothes and meals out in order to save money. The theory seems to be that some holidaymakers who've had to cancel plans two summers in a row are determined to go ahead this year despite the cost of living squeeze. I have never seen a start to the summer like this one. We have very, very strong demand. Families wanting to make up for lost sunshine. And yet we have an industry which is still well below normal capacity, simply because of resourcing and also because they've lost so much cash, they'd rather keep a lid on supply so they can keep the prices high. Now, if you're hoping to grab a last minute bargain, well, I'm afraid the travel firm TUI has warned there will be practically no last minute offers this year. And that's because of super high demand. The company's reportedly at 85 percent of pre-pandemic booking levels. It's the same message from lots of other industry voices. Simon, who we heard from just there, told us the difference in cost between school holiday flights and those in off season was worse than ever before. Let me give you an example. He's found flights to Italy next week for £24 for a round trip. In the school holidays, the same flights cost £500. That's a 2,500% increase. Now, if the cost doesn't put people off, especially with the high cost of living right now, then things like airport security queues and delays in getting your passport renewed might do. And there's been a lot of negative headlines on those issues recently, and staffing has been blamed for both. British Airways and EasyJet are still cancelling lots of flights every day, although with notice. Again, that's due to difficulties in getting hold of workers and keeping them in post. Here are Simon Calder's top tips if you are jetting off for the first time in a long while. If you haven't travelled abroad since 2019, well, you could be in for a bit of a shock. First thing to do, make sure you understand the rules for your destination, both in terms of COVID and also after Brexit, passport validity. Next, turn up good and early at the airport. You never know how long that queue for security is going to be. And of course, in your destination, you need to be prepared for all kinds of COVID restrictions still in force apart across large parts of the world. Well, we're going to be speaking to the boss of EasyJet about uh, all of those issues at quarter to eight this morning. I'd love to hear from you as well. Are you still planning a holiday or have you ruled it out because it's too expensive? Maybe the delays at airports are putting you off. Uh, whatever your plans are, do get in touch and let me know. And uh, Charlie and Naga, I think, you know, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, I was standing outside Manchester Airport talking about how there was this drive to recruit more security staff, people working overtime, cancelling their own holidays so just to help. The queues, to help they? deal with the queues. So we'll hear from EasyJet what impact all of that is having. Because, of course, that's beyond the airline's control. 
but it's for the airports to deal with. Is EasyJet the um, liner that's um, taken the seats out? Yes. So they have fewer. They have to. They can have fewer staff on, on fewer crew, crew on board. Yeah, that's absolutely so right. So you've got to have a certain number of cabin crew per number of passengers, yeah. and so uh, they've taken out some of the seats. It means they can have, I think, one less member of cabin crew so that they can operate more flights, hopefully reduce some of the cancellations. But we'll speak to the boss about that as well and find out what that means, because if you have fewer seats, does that mean that prices for the rest of the seats go up? We'll get into all of that. Ben, thanks very much. Um, it's coming up to quarter to eight, so we've been hearing lots about how um, lots of holiday companies, airlines, really keen to see how this year pans out in terms of bookings and many quite optimistic that they will come back from the pandemic lows. So we've had results from EasyJet. Yes, Ben's got details right now. Yes, indeed. Travel restrictions, quarantine, testing, all of that has proved so tough for the airline industry over the last couple of years. With the restrictions now being eased, there's hope that there is something of a bounce back and there are some promising signs of that. Uh, a lot of pent-up demand for holidays in the sun as well. Uh, as uh, Charlie and Nagy were just saying, EasyJet has released its latest financial results. They cover the first half of the financial year. And the airline has reported a headline loss before tax of £545 million. Pounds. That's for the first six months of this year. That excludes one-off costs. So it gives us a good indication of how the company is performing. So it is still losing money. And it sounds like a lot, but that's less than it was losing in the first half of last year. So bosses say the direction of travel is encouraging. They expect to operate 90% of capacity in the next three months. That's, of course, the crucial summer period. And the holiday division of the company, EasyJet Holidays, uh, is now on track to carry more than 1.1 million customers overall this year. Let's drill down into all of this and speak to Johan Lundgren, the chief executive of EasyJet, who joins us uh, from central London. So, uh, headline loss before tax of 545 million. It's an encouraging direction of travel that it's not as big a loss, but, but it's still a loss nonetheless. Yes, absolutely. And it's really reflecting the fact that we were still in the large part of the winter into a period of time where the travel restrictions were in place. So we, we couldn't really fly to any significance level at all. But the winter is always a loss-making season. But as you said, it is definitely a, a significant improvement from where we were at the first half last year. Uh, w when you look at the number of seats that were occupied in the first half of the year, there's still roughly about one in four seats on your planes that, that are empty. Uh, according to the figures, does that suggest that perhaps people uh, are not, that the demand isn't quite up there with the capacity that you're operating still? No, I mean, the, the, the first half of, of uh, the, what we've just been seeing from October to March as well was very much still in the fact that we had travel restrictions and people couldn't fly and keep, people couldn't travel. So it affected the volumes and it also affected the, the number of seats that uh, was, was filled on each plane. But now, when we're looking through for the, the summer and the period we're in right now, we expect to operate over 86% of load factor, which is the, the, the percentage of the seat that is actually will be filled with, with our customers on levels that, as you pointed out, will be 90% 2019 levels. And in, in uh, July, August, September, we expect to operate almost 97% of, mm. uh, of the capacity in 2019. Uh Restoring confidence uh, among people booking holidays is one thing. If they go ahead and book and then find that their flights are cancelled, there's the disappointment, there's the knock to confidence there. EasyJet has had to cancel um, uh, flights on quite a regular basis. H how many are you cancelling today? Well, uh, I think today it would be around uh, uh, 20 uh, flights in the UK. But I must say that those cancellations were done at the early part of April. So these are cancellations that was done then. And then the majority of the customers were rebooked into flights, usually within hours, because we run a schedule with a lot of frequencies in there. So, But you're absolutely right. It's been well documented that the sector, and EasyJet is, is not excluded from that, has had some challenges in the first part of April. But the actions we took then to avoid the cancellations are working. So we're operating now 250,000 
customers are flying with us on a, on a daily basis, mm. 1,600 flights as well. And it's very much a similar level of performance that we saw in 2019. So those actions that we took uh, are working as it is. But it is a, a, a challenging labor market, as, as you pointed out. And we had also then the increase of COVID in the first part of April. It, it was a difficult situation. Uh, uh, so there are some things which are within the airline's control, like the, you know, the crewing and the staffing of your, your actual planes. There are other things like long queues at a airports to get through security, delays in, in people getting their passports. How much of an effect do you think that's having on your business, those factors that are beyond your control? Uh, it is true that there, there is a number of things that sit outside our control and the best we can do is, is clearly to try to mitigate the consequences on that. But I think it all boils down to the same thing, that the, the labor market is very tight and we've seen a shortage of staff in a, in a number of airports. Not, this is not only in the UK, by the way, this is the same thing when you're looking outside of the UK. And I think it's uh, the two things that's happening is that you know people and companies are now you know looking to do more things. They're ramping up their activities, and unemployment levels is on a very very low. I think in the UK here it hasn't been as low since 1974, as an example. Mm. So a lot of companies are trying to get uh, labor from a smaller pool of people that is available, and that causes some stress into the system. But generally, one one should recognize, like like I said, that even if you take those things that has to do with airport disruption and then you would have normal things like weather and, and, and other events as well. We fly, like I said, 250,000 customers on a daily basis, very much in line with the same on-time performance that we had in 2019. Okay. Um, Johan Lundgren uh, from uh, EasyJet, Chief Executive, thank you very much indeed. And uh, we'd love to hear from you if you're planning a holiday, you're still planning to go away, is it too expensive, cost of living putting pressure on budgets, are the delays at airports putting you off, are you having trouble getting hold of uh, a, a passport that needs renewing, let us know, we'd love to hear from you, get in touch in the usual way. And uh, China and Naga, you know, this is something we're going to keep an eye on because we are entering that crucial summer holiday period when a lot of people will be desperate for a, a bit of sun, a bit of a change of scene question is you know is is it affordable yeah prices are really really pushing up ben